802 right now on the People Station V103, the ATL's number one for hip-hop and R&B. The Ryan Cameron Morning Show with Wanda Smith and myself, Gerard J. Ryan Cameron celebrating his birthday. Wanda's here. Rashawn yes. Ritchie from our sister station, Good News morning. and Talk 13. Good BWK morning. Is here. <laughs> also, mayoral candidate Mary Norwood is here. Good morning. Absolutely. Good morning. Delighted our, to be here. Nice. And our very own Maria Boynton will be sitting with us this morning as oh, well. Oh, hi, Maria. Hi. How Good are you? Good morning. So we have a runoff happening, of course, December the 5th. And, you know, we want to have the opportunity to address some more things and, and have Ms. Norwood come in and, and talk to us. And so it's good that we brought our political advisors in with us, our news <laughs> correspondent, Maria Boynton, and, Yay. of course, Rashad Richie. Rashad, I'm going to start with you. Okay, so let me just begin with what's happening right now. Okay. There's a lot of promotion, propaganda, rhetoric, whatever you want to call it, about you being a Republican. Yes. So I decided to look this up myself. So I looked up your voting record. It's a program called Vote Builder. It's not hard to find, not hard to get access to. You're not listed as a Republican. In addition to that, I saw that you were, you voted for Hillary Clinton, Barack Obama. But then there's a recording that's embedded in a meme of you talking to the Republican Party. Now, you were post two at large for the whole city, so you had to work with everybody. What do you say to people who will use your affiliation or support from Republicans to create this blanket statement that you yourself are a Republican? What's your answer to that? Well, Rashad, thank you so much for checking Vote Builder. As you know, that Vote Builder was produced by the Georgia Democratic Party. So it was a vote builder analysis by the Democratic Party, which said that my voting record leaned Democratic. So thank mm-hmm. you so much for doing that, because it really is important. The, the spliced and diced uh, recording was one of many, many times that I have talked about the election in 2009 in direct response to a question which was do you think that the voting will be accurate and legal and fair in Mm -hmm. 2017 so what has happened is yet again a tape has been an audio file has been altered and all of us who have been in radio know how easy that is to do you have a vox file vox file and you can slice and dice it and move things around any way you want to and that is what happened and i am saddened that Mm. mischaracterizations continue but thank you for clarifying that Truly, I am an independent, have always been an independent, and will always be an independent, and will serve all of Atlanta as our next mayor. 805 right now. Please go to watch v 103com and you can see what's going on live in the studio with us and Mary Norwood. Absolutely. Thank you for joining us this morning. Um, I am a huge fan of going around feeding the homeless people. My heart goes out to them. And of course, there are a lot of organizations and people in Atlanta that will honestly just stop by and feed them if they wanted to. But now there's something going on in our city where, you know, people are having concerns saying, I'll go to jail. I don't care what happens. Mm -hmm. I'm upset about this. What are your thoughts on taking care of the homeless people in the city of Atlanta? Well, what we know is that I have contributed, I have raised money to help the homeless over the years. I have raised over half a million dollars in public and private funds, both from the State Department of Transportation, from foundations, from CDBG grants. So I have a long history of helping the homeless. Uh, I know that with the feeding, Mm -hmm. the issue is not that you're feeding. The issue is who's cleaning up. Now, okay, right. we that's the issue. And mm-hmm. so the issue was to have permits so that there right. would be some responsibility. And, you know, I, I started out my career being Norwood for Neighborhoods, mm-hmm. uh, both working for Neighborhoods in the 1990s and then being a citywide council member since 2002. So downtown is actually a neighborhood. And there are people that have to walk across the trash that some well-meaning and very, very thoughtful, well-meaning group from somewhere else Mm -hmm. came and did not think about 
what Sunday mm-hmm. afternoon and Monday morning looked like with litter strewn. I have, you know, I served as the chair of the Clean City Commission in the mid-1990s. And I have an, a passion that no child should walk through filth to go to school. No child should walk through filth to get to the store mm-hmm, with their mm-hmm, mom. Mm-hmm. So I want to make sure that as I clean this city up fiscally, mm-hmm. I'm going to cl- and financially, I'm going to clean it up physically. I think it's so important that every neighborhood reflect the lovely people that live in it. All right. Thank you very much. Mrs. Norwood, hello. Thank you so much for coming in this morning. Um, of course, we had a, a, a long-fought race for mayor of Atlanta. You had several African-American candidates in that race. You had several white candidates in that race. And here's my question. Some say that the race for mayor has divided the city of Atlanta and divided it along racial lines. How do you plan to heal that rift? Well, I would say that my candidacy has been the candidacy of unity. When you look at the endorsements in the past two days, not only Shirley Franklin and Cesar Mitchell, of course, uh, also John Eves, also Reverend Timothy Fleming, also Reverend Jasper Williams, Hattie Dorsey, George Dorsey, Larry Dobbs, Lonnie Johnson, Carol Ann Dove, Maceo Williams, James Welcome, Maynard Eaton, the list goes on and on. These are community leaders, elected representatives who have support, who are supporting the Mary Norwood campaign, and there are more to come. So I would say that I am the candidate who has had support for years ac- across our entire city. When you when you look at my background in the 1990s, when I decided the city had been unfair to me, I got involved across the entire city. One of the groups I joined was the Election Coalition of Atlanta Neighborhoods. It was the first biracial, black and white, group in the city. We had one representative from each council district. The four Mm co-chairs were Ruth Reed, Emmett Johnson, Gloria Borders, and... Wait a minute. Ruth Reed, Emmett Johnson, Gloria Borders... And Jane Harmon. All four of them are supporting my campaign. We got together once a month. We monitored City Hall. We issued report cards on how the city was doing, responding to neighborhoods. We saved so many neighborhoods because we were united and the council knew we were paying attention. That group was in existence for several years, and I was the District 8 representative. Okay. 810 right now. We are going to come back with more with Mary Norbert. Also, opening the text line up at 404-741-9833. We'll try to get to some of your text questions coming up next on V103. Um, now, here's the deal. The runoff is happening December the 5th. And we're having a very good conversation with Ms. Norwood right now. We get a lot of questions that come in from the text line at 404-741-9833. So I'm going to start with one. Ms. Norwood, this one says, why should African Americans in ATL trust that you will promote our prosperity? Because I have for years, and the neighborhoods all across the city know that. Um, What is really important for us in the city right now is to make sure that we rewrite the zoning code, that we redevelop the city with protecting neighborhoods. There is a plan on the Internet that the commissioner of planning put together with Ryan Gravel, which is called ATLCityDesign.com. It is talks about preserving our communities. That's the way we don't have displacement. You have displacement when somebody comes in, buys out a whole neighborhood, and then builds whatever they want to build. This talks about and and espouses the view that we build along our commercial corridors with connectivity and mobility so that people can get to the goods and services. We need to have neighborhood circulators in in our neighborhoods. We have many neighborhoods with aging residents with seniors who either don't have transportation or no longer wish to drive in our crazy traffic. And so we need to be able to get them to the Hamilton E. Holmes Marta Station or the West End Marta Station so they can get to the grid and get where they would like to go. 
Uber is great. We need to make sure that we have a fare that is like a MARTA fare so mm. it's affordable and work out a deal with MARTA so that our seniors and others on limited income can in, can get around. And so that's a key component to having people stay in place mm. and to have the prosperity come everywhere. Um, we know that part of the city has not seen that prosperity and I am committed to it. That's why there is so much support across the entire city for this campaign. Mary Norwood right here. Please go to watch B103.com if you want to see what's happening in studio. Of course, Ms. Norwood, the residents of Atlanta are so very passionate about who they desire to be their next leader. You know that. And we want to talk to you about criminal justice reform. When it, when it comes to bridging the divide between the police and the community, how do you plan? What is your plan for criminal justice reform? Well, I am delighted to have had the endorsement of John Eves yesterday, mm -hmm. uh, along with so many other community leaders. And I, John and I have talked about his views in combining Fulton County and the city of Atlanta's criminal justice system to make sure that we don't have duplication, to make sure that we, and to save money. And if we save money, which is not the main purpose, but if we do, I wanted to put it back into our young people. I am pleased that our new police chief said, we're not writing tickets and trying to trap people in the system. Uh, we are going after violent crime in our town. And so she's done a complete shift, and I am glad to see that. We, it, true community policing is officers in every community where they're living there, and I am promoting a program that has been started by the Police Foundation, but to take it citywide, where every neighborhood has a police officer, and they will get the increase in that home value if they are in that community and they're working for the police department. That way, they will know who our community is. They know the children, the grandchildren, they know the friends. It's so important. When we're short-staffed and they're overbooked, and it is it's it's a recipe for not good things happening and I am all about making sure that we have the best trained anti-bias training of of any department in the nation and so I will work to protect our communities during it, campaigns Mary there's a lot of misinformation there's a lot of rough and tumble what makes you different what distinguishes you from your opponent? Mm, I like that question. Good question. Yes. Because you can see my track record for 25 years. I am a lady of my word. I am a lady of honesty. When you look at why Mayor Franklin endorsed me, she said three things. Character, integrity, transparency. It's really important that the next leader of this city lead with independence, with accountability, with fair play, with inclusion, with everybody enjoying the best of Atlanta. And that's what I'm committed to, and my track record speaks to that. For years and years, if you look at, we, yesterday I was endorsed by Joyce Dorsey. Joyce Dorsey and I worked with female offenders coming out of prison at a halfway house over mm -hmm. on Ponce de Leon near Krispy Kreme. In 1977, she was the executive director and I was the volunteer coordinator. And we helped women put their lives back together. That was 40 years ago. So when Joyce endorsed me yesterday, it wasn't a campaign endorsement. It was, this is my friend. This is the woman I've worked with. This is the woman I've known for 40 years. And Joyce Dorsey, for those in the audience who don't know, is head of FACA, the Fulton Atlanta Community Action Authority. Great organization. Helping the least of these. Mm -hmm. And so Joyce's endorsement is so important. 
Every union has endorsed me. Yesterday, I got an endorsement from ASME and from PACE. I already had endorsements from FIRE, from police. Mm -hmm. The employees across the city and across every department know that I'm going to work to have them be able to do their jobs. When we've got this income inequality in the city, the city has to lead the way. I supported $15 an hour. I'm going to Got lobby for good child care for all of our moms who are out there working hard every day. I am going to lobby for the, get, making sure that we get more resources to overcome this great inequity divide that we've got. Mm -hmm. There are a dozen things that we don't have time to discuss today, mm -hmm. but are already on my radar screen that I know we can do to have the to have our city lift everyone up. This is Atlanta, the city we aspire to. The image of our city is one of inclusion, of embracing diversity. It's what I've done my entire life. One of the things that I think concern a lot of our people here in Atlanta is we've been having a lot of crime with our youth people, you know, just having a lot of crime with our younger generation. What will be put in place for our parents once they are incarcerated or once they get out, what will happen? Well, number one, with our youth, we need to intervene quickly. And Rashad and I have talked about this. Mm -hmm. um, we need to make sure that there are alternatives. Lonnie Johnson yesterday endorsed me. You know, he's a super soaker, water gun. Mm -hmm. He's fabulous. Lonnie is all about the robotics program, which little kids do Legos, and then you work up to real robots. We want to take that citywide. Let's have... Let's have our city be involved in things that our young people actually want to do. It doesn't do you any good to have programming if they aren't interested. So we want to get the best of the best and make sure our young people are engaged in things that they think are fun. I'm married to a pediatrician. My stepdaughter's a pediatrician. Mm -hmm. You've got to engage kids that they want to play and at the same time, they are learning such great skills. We need jobs. I want a Maynard Jackson's Focus on Jobs program. These young people don't have access to ways to make money. They need it. I will make sure that we do that. So programs will be put in place. Absolutely. Mary Norwood, thank you very much for coming in. 8.32 right now. Again, the runoff is December the 5th. Early voting, oh, the early voting is going on right now. So right, absolutely. Thank you for taking the time to thank come you to the very Thanks, Thank you Mary. for having and me. And good luck. The thank election you. is Tuesday. There it is. Ryan Cameron Morning Show with Wanda Smith and myself, Javar J on V103. People Station V103, the ATL's number one for hip-hop and R&B. 903 right now, the Ryan Cameron Morning Show with Wanda Smith. I am Gerard J. Ryan Cameron celebrating his birthday. Wanda Smith right here. We are Good now morning. joined by a studio full. If you go to watch v 103com you can see what's going on. We have Rashad Ritchie from our sister station, News & Talk morning, 1380. Rashad. Good morning. W-A-O-K. <laughs> we have our news correspondent, Miss Maria Boynton. Good morning, Good morning. Maria. And we have Keisha Lance Bottoms in the studio. Hello. Good morning, Hello. Keisha. I am so glad to be here. Good morning. Good morning. How are morning. you? You doing good? I'm doing great. So we have a runoff going on. December mm -hmm. the 5th. Early voting, of course, going on right Absolutely. now. Absolutely. Um, and, you know, everybody's been talking about wanting to ask questions and wanting to find out now between, you know, Keisha Lance Bottoms and Mary Norwood, who are you going to go for? You know what I mean? You have two totally different views. Absolutely. And, and a lot of people have things they want to ask. So I want to let you right know right now. You can text us at 404-741-9833. And you can call 404-741-WVEE if you have questions. Rashad, we're going to start with you, sir. All right, Keisha Lance Bottoms, good morning. Good morning. I'm so glad to see you two days in a row. <laughs> I know. The pleasure is all mine, by the way. So good to see you again. Let's talk about something I'm hearing from callers, social media, and the streets. Your connection to Mayor Kasim Reed. People are saying this is the reinstallment of the Kasim Reed administration if they vote for Keisha Lance Bottoms. Is there real separation between mm. you and Mayor Reed? There absolutely is separation. And it's interesting because it's a very sexist narrative. I don't recall anyone ever asking Mayor Reed if he was going to be a continuation of Shirley Franklin. Mm -hmm. And so this notion that? that somehow, you know, he got a, a, a some pixie dust and made me <laughs> into a candidate and a woman. I don't know anyone who has any sense who would put themselves and their family 
through what I've gone through with this campaign over the last year, and I can take it. So I'm not complaining about that part, but the notion that I would somehow do it for someone mm-hmm. is really ridiculous. And it really is an insult to mothers like my mother, uh, who raised me to be a strong, independent woman, who made sure that I got a good education. I've worked two jobs since I was 15, and we were laughing. I was admiring Wanda's uh, lipstick and nail polish, and I was saying <laughs> in high school, I used to sell Theon's nail polish. Yes. So I, number five. Number five. Beautiful. <laughs> I've always been a worker. And mm-hmm. I've said before, Rashad, you know, Mayor Reed was not holding my hand when I finished number 30 in a class of 400 from Douglas High School at 17. He wasn't there when I finished number one in my class at FAMU, magna cum laude. He was not there when I took the bar and passed it for the first time. He wasn't there when I practiced law for over 20 years. He hadn't been there when I served as a judge for over six years. Mm. He wasn't there when I beat eight other people to serve on city council without a runoff. So this notion that I somehow need him sitting by my side to tell me how to lead this city uh, really needs to be put to bed. And, um, you know, it creates an unfortunate narrative for all of our girls out there who are working Mm -hmm. hard so they can stand tall and stand strong. All right. So right now in our city, um, it's trending about the homelessness and it's near and dear to my heart because I'm one of those people that go out in the community just driving along and I stop and pick up food and, you know, but. What is your take on homelessness in our city? Because it's been around for a very long time. What what are you going to do differently about it? I think that we still have a lot of work to be done as it relates to our homeless population. We've made some strides in that we've recently announced that we've achieved zero as it relates to our veterans. And that has been very intentional work. I think that intentional work needs to continue in other areas, whether it's focusing on LGBTQ youth or people with substance abuse issues. Where we've seen our success, Wanda, is where we have gotten people, we've identified people's needs on the streets Mm -hmm. and then identified supportive housing for them. And we have to make sure that we have enough supportive housing. So what that means is that if you have a substance abuse issue, once we find you shelter, that they, we then have at your doorstep the services you need to address the underlying issue. And we have to do it. Um, it has to extend far beyond our veterans. It has to go to all of our populations in need. There were 13 candidates in the race for mayor. 13. Whittled down now to two. You, of course, the top vote getter in the general election. And when we talk about the race for mayor of Atlanta, there are many who say that uh, it divided the city along racial lines. How would you, what is your plan to repair that rift? You know, I think it is just really a reminder for us all that race is still front and center. And whether we, you know, most people who don't want to talk about race are the people who have issues with race. And the reality is that it's a topic of conversation. That being said, this nation elected a president by the name of Barack Obama. So we know that the nation can transcend race when it comes to electing the most qualified. And that's what this election is all about. It's not about the black candidate or the white candidate. It's about who's qualified to lead the city. My issue um, as it relates to race and as it in this election, really, Maria, goes back to the sensitivities that are not there with my opponent when you cannot acknowledge racial profiling and it didn't just happen in the v103 form i've seen her double down triple down quadruple down on this answer she started along the same line just a few days ago she still doesn't get it when you can't denounce the policies of donald trump donald trump who has no respect for black and brown people overwhelmingly in this nation who has racist policies that are disproportionately impacting immigrant communities in this nation. That's when the racial conversation comes up. When you have a secret recording, when you begin a tape by saying, please don't tape me before young Republicans and what you are saying, you're speaking in this coded language about thugs going to vote, about felons, about people coming from the housing projects You're talking about African-Americans who are exercising their lawful right to vote in the city. That's where race comes in. When you create this narrative that to have anything in this city, that two professionals like my husband and I, to have something in this city 
means that you have to be corrupt. Those are racial subtleties, and I think that's what people are paying attention to, and that's not what the leadership of Atlanta should reflect. We are joined by Keisha Lance Bottoms right now. We're going to open up the text line at 404-741-9833, or you can call 404-741-WVE if you have any questions. Also, go to watchv103.com, and you can see what's going on. You can also comment right there on the live stream. We'll come back with more with Keisha Lance Bottoms after this on V103. Keisha Lance Bottoms is here. You ready to go to the phones, Keisha? Yep. Thank All right. you. Who is this? What's your question for Keisha Lance Bottoms? Hi, this is Courtney. Hi, Courtney. Go ahead with your, with your question. Um, I have a question um, for Ms. Mayor Keisha Bottoms. Um, as far as, like, the victimless crime rate, with our prison population being, you know, so crazy, even our county jails, I just want to, you know, just her take on that, on, you know, different things that, you know, that can be done to help that. Because I know Obama touched on it, um, but it were, nothing really went in depth as far as, you know, you know, even the, the, the drug crime rate, you know, in America, you know, like I said, all the victimless crimes, whether that's drug-related, or, you know, whatever form. But I just want to, you know, get her thoughts on that. So thank you for the question, Courtney. And, you know, this is what we're facing in Atlanta. President Obama made some tremendous strides, and we really were headed in the right direction as it relates to criminal justice reform. And you see how quickly it can be undone uh, just with one election, because all of the things that we were pushing for, toward as a nation in terms of criminal justice reform, you know, um, Trump has tried to undo day by day. And as it relates to the city of Atlanta, this is a very big conversation. And that's why I am committed to a criminal justice reform commission. Right now in the city of Atlanta, we have a pre-diversion pilot program. But that program needs to be fully funded so that when people commit crimes based on unmet uh, mental health issues, poverty, addiction, etc., that we aren't just penalizing them criminally, but we are, are, again, getting to the root cause of the issues and making sure that there are services in place to break this cycle because so much of what we're seeing within the city of Atlanta is driven by other things, not just criminal intent, but really underlying issues. And that has to be a focus because it's impacting our communities. I've talked throughout this campaign about the struggles of my family dealing with addiction and my dad's incarceration. And I know the generational impact that that has on families. So this is something that I take very personally and I know that it has to be a priority. Well, I, I, I think I like that answer. And my question is, as far as our youth is concerned, you know, it's very heartbreaking in our city to see when we see our children out here robbing and, you know, breaking in homes. And, you know, what is going to be, I guess, your take on taking care of our youth? Is there going to be rehabilitation? You know, are they going to jail? Are they going to like what? what is your take on it? Because parents are trying to figure out as well, what are they going to do when their kids are incarcerated as well? Wanda, I think our children have to have options, and for our mm -hmm. kids to have options, their parents have to have options, too. So one thing that we're doing right now in the city of Atlanta, we just created the At Promise Youth Center with the Atlanta Police Foundation and some of our corporate partners. If a child is picked up today in the city of Atlanta for a nonviolent crime, they're sent to this center, they are given an evaluation, their parents are given an evaluation. Mm. And if it's Urban League needs to step in for training, if it's housing, it's a complete diversion program. This uh, center was on tap to treat, to serve 120 families in one year. Mm -hmm. They service 60 in just two months. So I think that the goal really has to be to get nine more of those centers throughout Atlanta because the needs are there. Mm -hmm. But I think the other part is dealing with our kids is just one portion. We have to deal with our parents and their we have to deal with what those underlying issues are. And we have to be better partners as a city. Yes. And it's, you know, the city is headed in the right direction mm -hmm. financially, but we still have so many communities being left behind. But because we are on solid financial footing, mm -hmm. we can now drill down and drill into the issues that are facing our communities. Candidate Bottoms, checking the definition of the word gentrification, it says the process of renovating and improving a house or a district so that it conforms to middle class taste or the process of making a person or activity more refined or polite. Gentrification in the city of Atlanta, it has received condemnation. It has received praise. In your opinion, is gentrification a problem in Atlanta? And if it is, what is your plan to deal with it? 
The problem with gentrification is that we are leaving our communities behind. Again, this equity divide in the city of Atlanta. So redevelopment, everyone wants to see the grocery store and the pharmacy and the basic things come to communities, but it unfortunately is at the expense of the existing communities. That's why as a member of city council, I introduced displacement free zone legislation. We now have our first zone in Vine City and English Avenue. There's a fund in place. Help pay it will help pay rising property taxes for 20 years for people in the area, um, and it will also help people fix up their houses. But this is just a small step. So I, as as mayor, I am committed to a one billion dollar affordability plan, and it's all encompassing. It has a renters initiative portion because 50 percent of the people in the city of Atlanta are renters. Making sure that there's funding in place to provide incentives for private owners not to price people out also a path to home ownership 15-year path to home ownership it's a collaboration between 500 million in public investment over several years 500 million in private investment it has to be intentional because right now in the city of atlanta as we talk about affordability we're not just talking about people struggling to make minimum wage we're talking about nurses and teachers and people who work at the post office, people who work in this station. Right. Um, people cannot afford to live in the city of Atlanta, and it's getting worse by the day. Let's talk about public education. We know that the APS school board and the city of Atlanta, they are separate entities. One doesn't run the other. However, they do influence each other, and there's connection there for our young people. There's no secret the current APS, they do not have a great relationship with the current administration. A lot of this had to do with property deeds not being turned over mm. to the school board. The city of Atlanta still has them. Would you turn those property deeds over to the school board? And how would you create a better relationship between city and school board moving forward? The answer is yes. I will turn the deeds over. And I've already started on that relationship. I've always had a friendly relationship with the superintendent. And I don't want to get the impression that we're BFFs, but we've always had a very cordial and mutually respectful relationship with each other. So that personality conflict or professional conflict really has not been between she and I. Mm -hmm. um, I met with her and Jason Estevez from the school board a couple of weeks ago. And what I said to both of them is that I wanted to press reset on the relationship. I wanted us to have our own relationship in January, cleaning the slate. I wanted to know from their perspective where things have gone wrong with the city of Atlanta so that I could make an analysis of how I needed to proceed, God willing, when I'm elected mayor next week. One of the sticking points, obviously, relates to the deeds. After hearing from the superintendent and Jason, I know a big part of that conversation was related to the affordability component and APS's commitment to making sure there was affordable housing and the redevelopment. They've addressed that issue. And I committed to the superintendent that I would go back to the city of Atlanta. I would talk to the people within various departments of the city of Atlanta to find out why we were still holding on to those deeds. After having conversations at the city of Atlanta, conversations with the superintendent, I think we need to turn the deeds over immediately. Okay. Early voting is going on right now. Of course, the runoff is December the 5th. Keisha Lance Bottoms, thank you very much for your time. Thanks for coming in with us this morning. Thank you so much for having me. What time the club's going to close, girl? They said you said <laughs> you get in charge by 4 a.m. Is that true? Wanda, I only do day parties. <laughs> <laughs> oh, girl, uh-uh, 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 uh, girl. You got to get your life right, girl. At, at 21, we I couldn't handle hang, the clothes. Girl, uh-uh, girl, what? <laughs> All right, I'll do that party. I oh, I'll, I'll handle past, that. past 9 o'clock. Day parties for everybody. Oh, 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 <laughs> do I need to run for the mayor of Atlanta for the, for the club side? There it is. Mayor Ambassador. Tim Ambassador. 928 <laughs> right now, man. Thank you again. Keisha Thank you, Keisha. Bottoms in the building. Thank Rashad you Richie, Maria Boynton. I appreciate y'all. It's the People Station V103.